What if the reason you're struggling to understand the things in the Bible is not spiritual, but ultimately biological? I'm consistently asked about my connection to the Bible. How do I know the things that I know? How do I find the things that I find? Where do I go to find the things that I, I need to know? These patterns, these connections, how do I get them? What's different about me? It's really nothing about me. It's more about diet. I follow the instructions within the scriptures concerning diet. A diet, and this is not any sort of nutritional anything of that nature. This is diet strictly for mind and for mind understanding what's going on within the scriptures. So before getting into what is going on within the scriptures, I just want to bring out some points about the brain, stomach, gut, stomach, digestive, neurological connection that we have. The gut microbiome affects brain function. High fat diets can lead to leakiness of the gut epithelium, increasing the risk of depression. The stomach brain axis affects food intake, the regulation of glucose and fat metabolism, and psychological well-being and moods. The gut brain axis is a bidirectional communication network that links the enteric and central nervous systems, allowing the brain to influence intestinal activities. And this can be vice versa, and it ultimately is, and the gut to influence mood, cognition, and mental health. So said simply, the things that we eat affect how we think. What we put into our stomach affects how we behave. What we put into our stomach, and especially the weight that we would put onto our digestive system, it affects our state of mind, not simply just mood and quality. It affects quality of mind. The weighing down of the digestive system causes the brain to dampen, not necessarily the physical body to feel however sluggish it may feel. It goes right up to the brain. It slows the brain down, brain processing down, affects mood and quality of mood and processing also. So still continuing. The brain accounts for only about 2% of a person's body weight, but consumes between 20 to 30% of the body's available energy and oxygen. Active neurons burn fuel to function. Poor dieting somehow affects the student's academic and concentration level. Symptoms include tummy aches, distraction, unresponsiveness, and sleepiness during morning hours. Poor diet is a potential risk factor for the development of cognitive impairment. Conversely, dietary nutrients are protective against such impairments. Again, put simply, our brain consumes more energy and oxygen than its body weight. A poor diet forces the brain to either lose or force energy and oxygen, energy and oxygen from it or into it, draining the life force from the other organs within ourselves to help it or draining the life force from within it to help the other organs within us. A poor diet affects the amount of energy and oxygen our brain not only receives, but puts out to the other systems, including our ability, our, our, our system ability to learn, to function, and to function through that kind of learning. So what is the Bible's solution for maintaining a healthy, stomach and a healthy mind, especially when it comes to understanding the things that are within it. This has been a helpful Bible verse for me, Daniel. Daniel 10, 2 and 3. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant bread, neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth, neither did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. Now, what we're seeing here, we're seeing a particular diet for a particular action. This action is not for anyone. This diet is not for everyone who is not willing to fulfill and be engaged with fulfilling what the individual here is engaged in fulfilling. What the individual here is engaged with is understanding what is going on within the scriptures. Doing so, they are refraining from what is delicate from what is delectable, from what is delightful, 
They're not eating or consuming anything of that to their taste, including meats. Why? Because meats do something very bad to our intestines that cause it to overfunction, to overactivate, draining the life force from our other organs, and that falls right back down, or I should say goes right up, to our brain, draining the life force from our brain as it needs to help digest meat. Not good for anyone that is wanting to engage in any sort of high mental learning activity. Cut this out. Stop this. Allow the organs to rest. Allowing the organs to rest, the individual now has the ability to get their mind active and activated in a way that is able to resonate with the text. The individual here, taking away all their dainties, all their delights, the foods and such. Again, the heavy, tight foods symbolized by meat. They set a time period for their their process or whatever they wanted to do to do this. And in that time period, they let their mind be. They didn't hamper it down with anything heavy. They didn't put anything sweet into it. They didn't put anything too salty into it. They didn't put anything with fat in it. They didn't put anything that would weigh and bog down its uh, the digestive system's colon, where all of this stuff, including meat, sits in for months on end without ever being fully cleansed or purified from within it. Cut that out, and the mind is able to be given to higher things. Genesis. Genesis 129, and God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree, and the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you, it shall be for meat. Initial diet. No meat. What is to be considered meat is what is inside of that fruit therein. No flesh based diet for this individual assembly because their goal is ultimately mental. Their goal is ultimately mental. Now you go down the line and then you're seeing a meat diet being introduced to the Noenians and then you go further down and then to the Moses folks and it just keeps going on. It's because of the activity. You don't really need a mental activity for religion. That's what Moses, Noah, and such, they ended up in religion. Religion meaning or tending towards offering sacrifices and religious laws and maintaining self by that. It is the offering, the sacrifice, the right, the religious law, the tradition that is going to be your brain. You don't need a mental diet if that's going to be your brain. But this wasn't given in the beginning. What was given was something that was not bogging down and clogging up the intestinal system because Bible won't say this, but a a heavy weight diet onto the system kills the brain, kills the functioning of the brain and kills the quality of that functioning of the mind. And so when we see this here with no flesh based diet in the beginning, and then you get to the Noah's and then you get to the Moses's and you're seeing a change and then you go, well, wait a minute, they're doing it. God is allowing a diet of meat. All right, he's letting us do this now. Well, well, no, because according to the concept within the Bible, there's a philosophical concept known as the rule of first mention. And the rule of first mention states that where something is once uttered, despite what comes after and may even contradict it within the text itself from Genesis to Malachi, that first rule rule of mention, that first mention, stays to the book of Numbers. Numbers 22, 12. And God said unto Balaam, thou shalt not go with them, thou shalt not curse the people, for they are blessed. Numbers 22, 20. God came unto Balaam at night and said unto him, if the men come to call thee, rise up and go with them. Yet the word which I shall say unto you, speak. Numbers 22, 21, 22. Balaam rose up in the morning and went And verse 22, his God's anger was kindled because he went. And the angel of the Lord stood in the way for an adversary against him. Now he was riding upon his ass and his two servants were with him. Numbers 22, 32. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Wherefore hast thou smitten thine ass these three times? Behold, I went out to withstand thee because thy way is perverse. 
before me now. Wait a minute. I, I thought, I thought that God said go. He said go. And I went. Why are you mad? Because you told me to go. Well, what I'm neglecting in this instance to mention is the first mention, which said do not go. Everything thereafter was a test, a test that was failed. Many illustrations within the scriptures show this, and the results, such as Balaam's here, consistent. Rule of first mention does not change. What is first said, no matter what comes after or contradicts it within the scriptures, it holds. And in this particular case of diet, when you go into Genesis chapter 1, the diet there, that's set, that's fixed. And this is not a diet Again, for everyone, this is a diet for the individual engaged in high mental activity concerning what is going on within the scriptures. If your intention is to engage with the scriptures for helping and bringing health to your devotional conversations, thoughts, feelings, actions, and behaviors, this is the diet you need. The Daniel diet, the Genesis 1 diet, the diet where there is no meat, the diet where there is no sweets, the diet where there is nothing bogging down the digestive system or manipulating the neural system or the cognitive functioning of our human being. This diet is the only way and means, and I can say this personally because it's been a number of years I've given myself, Daniel, the author, the, the one saying in the book of Daniel that he set himself and cut himself off from what he cut himself off from, only gave himself three weeks. Well, I've seen the benefit of this when going into the scriptures, and it's been years I'm applying this diet uh, from the scriptures to my devotional conversation. And it is completely for a specific, I'll just say again, individual whose desire is to engage with the scriptures for the purpose of uplifting not simply who they are as a person, as a human, or as they are as a devotional creature or a devotional thinking and feeling mind, but also the people around you. This is the point that this diet is given. And it is given only to the individual that wants to set their mind to understand what's going on within the scriptures. So there is a connection between our stomach and our mind. There is a connection between our mind and our digestive system. There is a connection between our neurology and our digestion. We know this. Bible knows this. Bible will not say this blatantly in a way that we in 2025 in a Western world would want to hear it. Bible will give this through allegory, through parable, through wisdom, through philosophy, it's our responsibility to break that cultural, linguistic, philosophical context down for the purpose of understanding how to apply it to ourselves personally, intimately. So it has nothing to do with me. And I'm always getting the question about me and the Bible. How do I know the things that I know? Well, I just follow the instructions to understand. And when you follow the instructions to understand, which includes diet, not simply of what's going on uh, physically, but also mentally with temperament, there is a consistent diet that allows one access into the parable that the scriptures are. If able to follow that, there will be no problems.